Hey, hello, we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake, and today we're talking about Mass Effect Legendary Edition. It collects the original three games in a newer, modern package with all the DLCs integrated and a bunch of graphical enhancements, including some more substantial tweaking on the original, oldest Mass Effect 1. It's for modern platforms, well, I mean PS4, Xbox One, and PC. It's out Friday, May 14th, and we've been spending a ton of time with it for the last few days. Now, keep in mind though, we haven't been able to beat all three games. There is a lot of game here, so consider this uh, more of a review in progress or strong first impressions. So far, it seems pretty awesome, uh, not gonna lie. Very nice to see Bioware giving us something cool here. Although, a couple of visual things might irk fans who've replayed these games a ton of times. Uh, for the most part, this is a truly great way to experience Mass Effect, especially if you're new to the series. It's a series that has always felt like a miracle to me, and I'm happy now it's easier and clearer for people to experience straight up. Uh, the way it works now is you fire it up and you get this fancy new splash screen that allows you to access the three games. Then when you go into each individual one, they are managed separately with their own menu, and you can pretty seamlessly input your saves. And the character creator is now completely unified, so there's one character creator and it's across all three games. Or of course, you could just use the default Shepherds, male or female, which still look the coolest. I, I just like making a mediocre version of myself for these games. But the biggest wow factor here would probably be Mass Effect 1, visually. It's the oldest, and it's always been rough, so it's seen the most improvement here. Uh, first, on the visual front, you can tell pretty much right away, especially when you're plopped onto Eden Prime. It's, it's wow, like, I mean, look at it. The detail on your character's suit, the improved textures, more atmospheric effects of the redone, more realistically simulated lighting, and of course the sharp, higher resolution, and pretty rock solid frame rate, it's all working overtime here and can be really impressive throughout the game. Uh, the gist of what they did, if you're into the tech graphic stuff, uh, they all have full HDR support, all can be 4K UHD, depending on where you're playing, cleaned up models, shaders and effects, some widescreen support, DX11 on PC, beefed up audio, improved post-processing, new lighting, uh, volumetric stuff, better anti-aliasing, all with the options on the consoles to choose between favoring quality or prioritizing frame rate. But the choices are pretty good, like even if, if you're still playing on a base console, you can still choose and get 60 FPS, which is nice. The graphical stuff hits Mass Effect 1 the hardest, and it's nice to see. Uh, they've also kind of made some environments like Novaria Station and, and the Citadel uh, feel slightly more alive with little tweaks and additions. Mass Effect 1 Remake is where the hardcore fans might take the most issue with some visual stuff. Uh, the game is much more vibrant, and it kind of helps make all three games feel a bit more unified in terms of color palette, but it results in one being way more colorful in some areas than you might expect, or some areas just having a completely different vibe because the skybox looks different, or say the atmospheric effects and colors make the world feel different than it initially did. It didn't bother me too much personally, except for like one location, but you know, it's worth pointing out if you are a hardcore fan that like annually replays Mass Effect 1. It's gonna be different. Uh, another thing that's only an issue in Mass Effect 1 is that while many faces look improved and genuinely pretty great, some look a little more creepy than they ever originally did. Uh, Udina looks really weird. He actually looks more punchable. Uh, that's probably because of the way the new lighting is cast on his face, but... Uh, and then uh, Captain Anderson has weird bug eyes, and, and it's hilarious. It always looks like he's freaking out. His eyes are bulging out of his head. This doesn't carry over to the other games, but it's, it's worth pointing out here for Mass Effect 1. And also on the gameplay front, a few things have been improved. You can choose how you play. You know, with the traditional leveling speed and level cap or, or the rebalanced legendary mode. Weapon type use is no longer gated depending on what you're playing as, so uh, you, you can do whatever you want and prioritize your leveling how you see fit. They've adjusted the camera angle a bit, like how far it is, and all of the combat is a bit more responsive. Bioware claims that the cover has been adjusted a bit and the AI is improved. 
I didn't notice any of that. It does still seem pretty damn rough. Uh, same with the shooting. Now, the feel is slightly better, and some things like uh, the camera depth, uh, when you ADS and when you ADS from cover is much better. The game still feels old and a bit messy here. It's, it's not like they took Mass Effect 2 or Mass Effect 3 combat and just slapped it into Mass Effect 1. Don't expect that. That is something that they probably couldn't do with the resources they had without probably messing everything up. So they did the best they could with the combat they had. And al although I can say it is improved, I can't say it's like a game changer completely. It still feels a little old, but at least it's gotten a little bit of polish and, you know, the, the, the control schemes and the HUD and stuff is improved. Uh, and also the Mako has been improved, the vehicle. Uh, it's still floaty and it's still a bit awkward, but navigating and shooting just generally feel better. I also never really hated the Mako sections, so that's where I'm coming from. I always liked it. That's like an unpopular opinion, apparently. But the forward boost works really, really well, and driving around is just kind of fun. I, I think the fun little lonely planet roaming sense of exploration you get is really underrated, as is the entirety of Mass Effect 1. Mass Effect 2, though, still my favorite, and it still looks and feels great. It's weirder, there's more of the criminal underworld element to it, you know, there, there are some great voice actors that show up. Also, shout out to the Shadow Broker DLC, which you get here, which is also great. Uh, the Mass Effect series had tons of DLCs and add-ons and stuff like that, since it was a time when this stuff was running rampant like crazy. And some of it varies, but the good stuff is great, and it's nice to have it all here easily accessed, usually right in the game now. Three is the one we've admittedly spent the least amount of time with, uh, but within the first few hours, it still looks good. It's the newest, it is the freshest, but now it's super sharp and it has a way more kick-ass frame rate. Although settings like subtitles and stuff can carry across all three games, it's worth noting that PC options, like the graphical options, are extremely limited. Although we tested the Xbox version, some friends of ours have pointed out that the PC settings leave a little bit to be desired. Desired, uh, something that can be totally fixed down the line and updated, but just worth noting for those types of folks jumping in. Also, something that I absolutely think is worth pointing out is that Legendary Edition does have a photo mode. I've said it before, man, but I think every game should have a photo mode. I would love that. The things that the photo mode community can do, uh, just shout out to them for a second, uh, when they are given even the most basic level of tools, just makes games that much more fun to experience and just share in, in the gaming culture. Anyway, I don't know where I was going with that. Soapbox over. Uh, so after having access to this and spending a substantial amount of time in Mass Effect 1 and a few hours in 2 and 3, so far, it seems pretty great. Like I said, Mass Effect 1 has some quirks, but they put some work in overall, and I think this is a nice package. A good, high-quality way to experience a really, truly great sci-fi trilogy. They each have their unique differences and level of RPG-ness. Where you have Mass Effect 1, which very much still feels like it has the identity of the Bioware RPGs that came before it and really embraces the hardcore RPG elements while trying to embrace some cinematic storytelling. To Mass Effect 2, which gets a little bit more edgy and a bit more strange and a little darker. To Mass Effect 3, which goes for a big, huge end of the world scenario, but also, of course, had that controversy with the endings. They're all all worth experiencing for like completely different reasons, but the whole series, the characters, and the world they built in all the games are top class, second to none. Uh, to go on this space adventure and choose to be a hero or like a rude badass or a ruthless killer, making massive decisions along the way that are actually like hard choices that may affect the world or some of the characters in your party to the point where you may never see them again or you could just have sex with them. All of these elements, you throw it in a pot and you get games that are uniquely special, and I, I'm glad they're preserved, yet updated here. I highly recommend these games, obviously. If you've never played a Mass Effect game, now is the time, especially considering each one of these games you can invest a substantial chunk of time in. There are tons of side quests, characters to meet, different areas to learn about, things to read, dialogue choices to have. They are really worth the value, I think. But of course, this is a before you buy. You know how this goes down by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinions. And now I want to hear yours down in the comments. What's your favorite thing about Mass Effect? And who is your favorite character? Is there a character that when you jump into the Legendary Edition, 
the remastered version uh, that you're looking forward to immediately ditching or maybe smooching. I don't know. Let's talk anything Mass Effect down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video though, and maybe we helped you out and steered you towards a decision, clicking the like button is all you gotta do. Man, it helps us out. We would really appreciate that. But if you're new, consider subscribing as well because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time. Well, size isn't everything. Why so touchy, Joker? I'm just saying you need firepower, too. Look at that monster. Its main gun could rip through the barriers in any ship in the Alliance fleet. Good thing it's on our side, then. Citadel Control, this is SSV Normandy, requesting permission to land. Stand by for clearance, Normandy. Clearance granted. You may begin your approach. Transferring you to an Alliance...